Most people think that when it comes to EFI tuning, it's all about sitting in the comfort of the driver's seat behind the laptop screen. Well, unfortunately, we are still dealing with a mechanical system, and sometimes components on the engine can also give us problems, as well as potentially the wiring between the ECU and the engine. When it comes to tuning, in my own experience, probably only one out of five tuning jobs really goes perfectly smoothly. The other four jobs will require some level of of fault finding or diagnosis to find out why everything isn't quite performing how it should. A perfect example of this is the Cindy Club's Wolf GB08 race car that's competing in the 2018 Pikes Peak Hill Climb. The car had been tuned at their home base, but on competing in the first practice day here at Pikes Peak, it was obvious something wasn't quite right. We've commandeered the Mustang Dyno at M-Spec Performance in Denver, Colorado, and we're currently going through fault finding, trying to get to the bottom of exactly what the problem is. At the moment, the evidence we've got is that there is a problem with two of the cylinders and the way they're running. This is evidenced by the exhaust gas temperature being logged by the MoTeC M1 ECU. And much more simply, it's also obvious when we remove the spark plugs. So at this point, we're delving in to see if we can get to the bottom of what's causing this problem. With this kind of issue, it's really important to start by bringing it back to basics and not trying to overcomplicate things. Really, when it comes to the way the engine operates, we need fuel, we need air, we need spark, and we need compression. So this is really a good place for any diagnostics to start. We've started by looking at the spark plugs and it's clear straight away that the engine isn't firing on two of the cylinders. This is evidenced by the fact that the plugs are still looking brand new, given that these were a fresh set of plugs fitted to the engine. The spark plugs, however, are wet with fuel, so we do know that there is fuel getting into the cylinder. We've gone through and we've performed a spark output test and an injector output test on the M1 ECU, and this just confirms that the coils are actually firing and we are seeing spark. Another slightly stranger aspect that we are investigating here, because this engine has recently been swapped, we're also investigating the intake manifold just to make sure that there hasn't been a rag left inside the intake system somewhere that's ended up reducing the airflow into two of the cylinders. So at this point we've covered the simple and the basic aspects and we haven't found a solution to this problem. So now we're going to have to delve in a little bit deeper and see if we can find out what's causing the issues. Now unfortunately some problems simply take longer to get sorted out than others and as it turned out we didn't have enough time to get through all of the problems while we are at M-Spec Performance trying to help diagnose what was going on. The team however did stick to their guns, put in the hard yards and uncovered the problem finally. By the time the problem was uncovered, we'd gone through a fairly long laundry list of diagnostic checks and highlighted and gone through just about every aspect of the engine's operation. What we were finding is that the engine was running on two cylinders, but more complex than that, we were also finding that the cylinders the engine was running on was swapping between one and four and then alternatively two and three. This is a relatively confusing situation and didn't make diagnosing the issue any easier. Ultimately, the team found out that the dowel that drives the exhaust cam between the vernier cam gear and the cam itself had snapped and this had allowed the timing of the exhaust cam to move quite dramatically, somewhere in the region of about 30 degrees. So with the cam timing this far out, there were several problems. First of all, with that cam timing that far out, there's no way the engine will run cleanly and run correctly. However, the synchronisation information that the MoTeC ECU relies on to let it know whereabouts in the engine cycle it is also comes from a sensor connected to the exhaust cam. This meant that the ECU was not receiving the information at the correct time and was getting confused about whereabouts in the engine cycle the engine was. The team went through the process of splitting the engine and transaxle out of the chassis, removing the cam and replacing the broken parts and correctly timing the exhaust cam back to where it should be. With that sorted, the engine finally ran correctly and they could get down to the task of actually tuning it. 
This resulted in a relatively impressive 460 wheel horsepower given the fact that the dyno was located in Denver at approximately 6,000 feet above sea level. This was also achieved at a relatively modest 16 psi. With the team losing three days to diagnostics and tuning this really put them on the back foot. It meant that they didn't get to test on many sections of the mountain and also more importantly meant that they missed out on qualifying. Despite this on the Friday test session on the top section Robin managed to put in an impressive second fastest outright time. So we're looking forward to seeing how they go today on race day. I'd like to give a big shout out to MSpec Performance in Denver for allowing the team to use the dyno and keeping the doors open till late at night. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.